So now that we've seen waves and that light can interfere, we now start to question what we've seen before. We had geometric optics, and when we had geometric optics, it looked like the light just passed through. It looked like it was just a stream of something that got bent or uh, got reflected in certain ways. Now we have this wave nature of light. So we ask the question, what exactly is light? Well, what photons are? Photons are what we call a, um, light. They're a little packet of alternating electric and magnetic waves. And this is the reason why we aren't covering this stuff until after we've covered all of electricity and magnetism. But what you can see in this little diagram is that the electric field is going to oscillate in the z direction in this case. It's going to move up and down. The magnetic field is going to oscillate in the x direction. And it's going to propagate in the y direction. Actually, it's in the negative y direction. But what we can start to see is that this is what a wave looks like. Well, a photon is a little bit more complicated than just in this. A photon does have some duration to it, so a photon is a packet of this. So it looks like a little bundle of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. But if it has a wave to it, we can start to label some stuff on. This is nothing really anything new. Uh, we saw that as a function of time, it's going to have a frequency, an angular frequency. This tells us how many radians per second does it go through related to it. What is, uh, what's its frequency? It also has a k value, a wave vector. And these are things that we've seen before when we were dealing with waves. This is uh, going back to first semester physics, but nothing too terribly complicated. This is just a general form of a wave. And you'll see that the sign of one is the sign of the other. So the electric and the magnetic fields are going to be uh, traveling in the same manner. They're going to be obeying the same oscillations, but they may be in different directions and they may and they will have different um, magnitudes. But when we start to look at this, we can go back and there's a couple relationships we can come up with. And one of the really important ones that we've come up with is that photons do carry energy. Well, the energy of the photon is given by hc over lambda, or h nu. These are the two most common ones that we see. We can see this h bar omega. Uh, h bar is just h over 2 pi. Well, this just means that for a photon, if we have a photon and it has a specific wavelength that's traveling at the speed of light, which it probably is, um, and, and h is just another constant, we can see that using this relationship we can get the energy of that photon. And this has some relatively far-reaching consequences. But related to that, photons also carry momentum. And this is actually going to be even a little bit more complicated. So we get the wave vector coming back in here. We have h bar times the wave vector, and this gives us the momentum of a photon. Just said that with this statement, light has momentum, which means all of our properties for momentum, conservation of momentum, still apply. And we'll see some of those examples um, when we do some problems on these. But if light has a, a, vector, a wave vector, we can relate this uh, based off of what a wave vector is. Uh, the magnitude of wave vector is 2 pi over lambda. So that means that we have h over lambda is equal to the photon, the wavelength, or the wavelength h divided by the wavelength of light is equal to the momentum of the photon. And this equation right here, this photon momentum equaling h over lambda. We'll actually see again in the future, but just remember this is the, the equation for the momentum of a photon. And you'll notice that's a little bit different that we are now starting to relate c or omegas and k's in this. Well for light we know that for a wavelength, a specific wavelength, a specific frequency, it has to have specific velocity. So h, or it's not h, sorry, lambda nu, the wavelength, the wavelength times 
angular frequency has to give, if we work this equation, would have to give us that our speed would be c. So that's one of the reasons why this looks a little bit different, why we're relating wave uh, frequencies and wave lengths. Not normally what we can do with normal um, normal light or normal waves, but we can do it with this. So when we get through this, uh, we still haven't really answered the question of is light a wave or is light a particle? Well, looking at this, looking at momentum, this has momentum, this looks like a particle. Knowing that this looks, this is a wave, we really can't answer that question. It's a question that still is kind of undetermined. At different points, light will act like a wave. It will interfere, it'll diffract, it'll, you know, we shine it through a double slit experiment and we see what happens. However, we know that it also acts like a particle. So photons can carry momentum, they carry energy. We get the particle nature of, of photons. So what we call this is we call this a wave-particle duality. It looks like a wave, it looks like a particle. And the physics is consistent. It works. It just sometimes it looks more like a wave, sometimes it looks more like a particle. And it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out which one you need to use at which points, but if the light's interfering, it's acting like a wave. If the white light is, say, incident on another particle and it's causing uh, it to, to transfer some momentum, then we can treat it more like a particle. But it does have this nature. And in the future, we're going to actually expand on this notion of wave-particle duality. But the last little thing to go through is if we haven't seen what the actual spectro of a wave looks like, so now that we know the wavelength, uh, that wavelength and energy have a relationship and wavelength and frequency have a relationship, we can get this whole inf uh, EM radiation or electromagnetic radiation spectra. And we'll see that visible is just a nice little chunk of this, but gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, radio, long wave, and the visible all come from the same spectra. So all light, when we say light, we not only mean the visible light, but all of these other ones all come from the same concept of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. So if we start to look at some stuff, just to get an idea, gamma rays, x-rays are about one angstrom. Uh, cell wall, which is about 10 nanometers, is in the uh, x-ray to ultraviolet range. Uh, virus, a um, couple hundred nanometers, we're definitely in ultraviolet. Particles filtered by a surgical mask is uh, one micron. Cells are about 10 microns, we're now into the infrared uh, wavelength of light, or what would be the same size as an infrared wavelength. Uh, width of your hair is about 10 mi or 100 microns, getting into a little bit deeper into infrared. Uh, your finger is about the same as a microwave. Uh, your hand is similar to the microwave to radio range. Uh, small child, about one meter is in the radio range, and this is where we're going to start to get our UHF, VHF, our FM signals, and finally AM signals that you get up on get on your. Uh, radio somewhere on the order of a wavelength near a football field long. So we see that really the big difference between all of these is just the wavelength of light. Because the wavelength changes, the energy for these particles changes. So these guys really long wavelength, which means really low energy per photon. These gamma rays and x-rays are really high energy photons. So it's just kind of an interesting thing to see the the wavelengths all together. So when we're going through the rest of physics, we got to remember that wave will obey particle-like features and wave-like features, and we have some quantities that relate to both of them, such as wavelength and frequency.